Now yeah? Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. Should be. Have we heard from Dave Chapman? He's not asked to join yet. In that case, I'll just quickly send him. Oh, I'll quickly send him a text because he's the reason that we're here. He did say it was in his diary. Just to be on the safe side. Right. Okay. Welcome to the latest uh, meeting of the Cone Neighbourhood Plan Advisory Committee. Um, and I uh, have apologies from uh, Kevin McNulty, uh, Howard Thomas, and Brian Wildman. Um, I have just received a text uh, from Jonathan Nixon to say he's on his way. Uh, um, are there any declarations of interest? And the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on Tuesday the 30th, sorry, that's the current meeting. The minutes of the last meeting, which was held on, on Thursday, the 18th of November. Has everybody had a chance to digest these? Is everybody happy with them? Do I have a proposal that they're, that they're pleased? I'll propose it. Seconder? All those in favour? Splendid. Okay. All right, public forum. We see a sea of empty chairs. Um, and uh, the next thing is site viability. That's item six. But obviously, I don't think we should do it without Dave Chapman here. Um, so if we move on to item seven, which is the list of non-designated heritage assets. So essentially, we added some new sites. We actually put one house in whose owners asked for it to be taken out. It sold. The new owners wanted it to be in again. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have, I knew I shouldn't have uh, uh, of uh, remove the text. Um, so that's back in. So there's, there's, a, there's a certain amount of in and out with this. Um, once David finished, and thank you, David, for all your hard work compiling all the pictures and the layouts, but once David um, printed it off and gave it to me, it became apparent that we had to do something about the front cover because the front cover features a building that has planning permission extant for demolition. So I just didn't feel it was a poster building for the front cover of our list of non-designated heritage assets. Um, then I discuss, had a discussion this morning with Gina, afternoon with Gina, about um, the comments. Was it from Historic England? Yes. So David, do you want to, David very kindly went and trawled through uh, an enormous spreadsheet uh, that enormous spreadsheets always frighten me so he very kindly trawled through and tell us what you found hello yeah. jonathan i think i think it's one of those ones it's all about fitting into mapping them that was the key and historic england said you must map them and thank I you think, to liz hurley who I did think, do the mapping yeah, i was gonna say i think liz was on the way to, to, to do that it, it didn't request anything special about the mapping so not you know grid coordinates or anything like that right it just said about map them Right. Um, and then put a key by the side. So have we got a key? Is that just a list of names or numbers, perhaps? Um, I think it's going to be better. Can you hear me, yes. by the way? Yeah, I think it's going to be better if I use numbers because there are so many sites. I've tried to label them on the pins, but it's just very congested. So I think if I put numbers on the pins and then provide a key with numbers matching the relevant properties, that's gonna be the best way forward. Is that something you can do fairly speedily? 
Yes, I will do it by the end of the weekend for absolute sure. I am on holiday, but I'm back Thursday. That's so kind. I'm I'm really grateful. Okay. Um, I appreciate that you've only just had this document. And to be honest with you, although I wrote it, I've not read it myself. Um, (laughs) And and in a sense, you have to stand back off documents that you've written yourself, but it helps if other people look at them. So, for example, when David was doing the um, layout, he said to me, my goodness, you've given the Hippodrome short shrift. You've hardly said anything about it. And I realised that I had, in fact, I'd not mentioned the interior, I'd, I'd barely described the facade, I'd gone on a, a bit randomly about the Derby Arms. So I'm very happy to uh, accept any kind of criticism about there's too much on this, or there's too little on this, or you're wrong. Um, because as you know, I'm an off Cumden. I was given this task, and I just manfully tried my best with it. But I, I would appreciate eagle eyes on, on this document. Um, I'd be very grateful. So are there any other um, thoughts before we move back to item six uh, on heritage assets? Does anybody have anything to say? Gina? Um, yeah, can I just say that if, um, Liz, if you're going to use numbers on the maps, that you just use the numbers that are actually in, in the document itself, yeah. Marvellous. Okay. And I've changed the front cover as well. You've I've done, that, done that already. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. So moving back to item six, site viability, I'd like to welcome uh, Dave Chapman, who is our guru on viability, which, as we all know, was the main problem that we faced when we went out to consultation at Regulation 14. Uh, we did face quite a few problems at Regulation 14, but this was the major one. And um, so I'd like you to introduce your report and explain to me what you explained when we were talking on the telephone about it, which is things that we could do next. And obviously our planning consultant, Michael Wellock, is here and I'm thinking because this is a specialist thing, you and he can have a bit of a dialogue about it and the rest of us can listen. Okay, cool. Um, I I don't regard myself as an expert in anything, if I'm being honest. Um, So let me introduce myself. My name's Dave Chapman. Um, In this guise, working uh, for and sort of on behalf of locality, I work with the Neighbourhood Planning uh, Support Programme team within locality. Um, I do a fair bit of sort of work around programme management, supporting groups through in terms of uh the needs that they have and understanding how to meet those needs and how best to meet those needs um and the two elements of the program that i probably have uh greater input to are the the support around neighborhood development orders and the viability work now just let me explain neighborhood development orders are effectively uh a form of planning application that, that grants consent through a referendum process. Um, one of the things that I think we've learned over the years is that actually there's no two sites that are the same. So every set of circumstances is, is slightly different. And one of the things that, that we're trying to do in terms of the, the viability piece of work that, that we're looking at, and and apologies, because effectively you're being used with a number of other groups this year as a bit of a sort of guinea pig, really, in that we previously had a viability package that looked sort of very rigidly at, at the sort of market and context in a, in a sort of conventional way without, without actually then us being able to say, OK, so how might we support you to make sites that are marginally viable, more viable, if that makes sense, you know, drew a line under it. Whereas this particular viability package, um, we're, we're trying to find ways of, of working with groups like yourself, so qualifying bodies, to look at what else do we need in terms of information? What else might we, we think about in terms of the way in which the, the delivery might come forward on said sites to think about how they might become more viable? Because we, we recognise that there are a number of... Uh, I guess communities, neighbourhood areas that have potentially a range of sort of complex, challenging, 
uh, derelict sites that have been left there potentially for a number of years and actually it's 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 almost easier for developers to pick off lower hanging fruit which is you know that which is a greenfield site somewhere else and as a consequence actually what we find is we find that there's a conversation going on with a number of qualifying bodies about saying well actually this makes very little sense to us that we have land available for development within the settlement boundary that that actually if it came forward in the right way with the right form of development could actually make our community more sustainable and when i use the word sustainable there not only environmentally but but socially sustainable as well as potentially economically more sustainable and support the development of sort of social um yeah social capacity within those within those areas rather than actually looking at, at land which actually you know might produce beautiful houses on but but nevertheless continues not to meet the needs of the of the community in the way that some of these sites could so it we haven't, if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think we've yet got to the sort of final end product on, on any of these particular reports at this stage. Um, and so really the conversation tonight is, you know, where else might we go with this? And, and accepting the fact that I've had some feedback on the report already and actually those changes look relatively straightforward to make. The next question is, what more could we do? Because it strikes me that as a, as a neighbourhood plan, you are looking to allocate a number of brownfield sites within the settlement. What you're looking at is you're looking at making sure that actually those sites in the way that they are allocated can come forward for development or would come forward for development over the lifetime of the, of the plan rather than just sitting there. And the question then is, is actually how do, how do we ensure that the, the work that we do with the viability piece of work um, it gives us confidence to actually, if you like, work with you to shape some of the policies and the site allocations to ensure that the wording is right and to ensure that we've got the right level of detail in there that then would mean that actually an independent examiner, when he would look at it, would say, yes, we're happy with that. That clearly meets the basic conditions as well. And, and, and effectively, you go on further with, with effectively the, de the delivery of the plan itself because it encourages landowners to bring those sites forward. Um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop there to see if there's any sort of questions. And actually, I love I love Zoom meetings so much because they're because they're actually the most challenging things, aren't they, in so many ways, because I'm looking at a number of faces and thinking to myself, questions could come from anywhere. And I'm not entirely sure, but I'm seeing everybody either. So anyway, I'm stopping for a second. Any questions? Well, I've got a little comment, which is today we heard that the government was giving a couple of million pounds to Nelson to develop a site that everybody would say would be hopeless for 30 houses in Nelson. That's the neighbouring town. I would say that most people in this room, and we're trying not to be biased, uh, would say that Nelson is less viable than Cone generally. Um, we are biased, actually. We'd all say that Cone is nicer. Um, but I'm sure that at Nelson Town Council, they'd say the opposite. Um, I think that the levelling up fund and the, the movement within government towards Brownfield doesn't really align with our local planning authority. I think I'm being fair in saying that. Um, we've had meetings, haven't we, Michael, um, when uh, the planning manager has just said literally none of our brownfield sites would ever be viable, not in the lifetime of the plan or at all, um, which is a little bit uh, chastening and upsetting because we do have these large areas within our settlement boundary that have a lowering effect on investment and a lowering effect on the communities that surround them. And certainly I'm looking at Alice, uh, you can see my hand look popping out. <laughs> I'm looking at Alice, who is a waterside councillor, and um, I have had emails from residents in her ward, and they have said to me, look, Sarah, this site, this empty site that was a mill site, my house overlooks it, it would be a nightmare for me if it was built on, personally, you know, disruption, dust, lorries, beep, beep, this lorry is reversing. But genuinely, 
I would rather see it be developed for the good of the town, for the good of the community, and put up with all the disruption and stuff that comes with a construction site. People want this development so much, they're not putting their own interests first, which is incredibly unlikely, but true. There's a number, there are a number of things there that are worth, that are worth commenting on, but anybody, anybody else got any questions at, at this stage given? Cool, Jerry, I think. I... Thank you. Um, one of the things that strikes me is that the viability study is a snapshot at a particular time. Um, we have a, a defunct rail link between Cone and Skipton, which uh, is going through government at the moment with a view to opening it up. Yep. Should it be opened up, then uh, yep. Manchester, Bradford and Leeds yep. will all become within the uh, commuter reach, easy commuter reach of Cone. And Cone's viability as a as a domestic site would increase dramatically. How do we put that into such a study to say, if this happens, we will have more of a, more advantage? Uh, it's a very good, it's a very good question because it is a snapshot and it's a snapshot in, in time. I mean, I think one of the things that is critical on this at this stage is you've got, as far as we see it, you've got three sites where where they're showing where there is a where there is a viability. So actually, those are three sites that probably what I would be saying to you at this stage is, you know, is there any one of those where we could work a little bit further with with perhaps a landowner and a developer to actually explore that in more detail and get more, if you like, real market evidence at this point in time, rather than so that we effectively reduce some of the assumptions that we've got. And actually then within that, what we're then able to do is to come back to you, I think, and say, actually, we think the policies on this would be could be written in, in the following way, taking into account all of the potential, if you like, future movement around brownfield sites, um, links to links to other settlements, et cetera, et cetera, if that makes sense. And, and the value of that is you then might end up with you know, effectively one site that you're allocating that, that, that then moves quite quickly into development post that, because actually we've worked with the, the sort of developer and landowner to a certain extent to actually shift it on. And that in itself then gives confidence around the other sites. Does that, does that sort of make sense as well? The challenge of this, of course, is, is the one question that I might ask is, you know, you might all be fed up and sick to the back teeth of, of neighbourhood planning full stop given the length of time that you've been going and of course actually what I'm suggesting here is is something that actually might extend that time frame a little bit longer before you can actually sort of if you like submit the plan to the local authority and move it through those through those last stages but you know it, it it's one of those things that I think is probably worth considering Okay, well, that worries me about any delay. Um, I ought to tell you some more What's information. A, yeah, give me your time you, scales. Yeah, I ought to tell you some more information that you need to be aware of. So our annual target as a borough is 298, and the government standard methodology is 142. Yeah. Um, at last week's policy and resources, we were asked to approve the local plan two, not the full council that would come to the full council in December, but the recommendation to accept the local plan part two with a new target of 240. So that's nearly 100 more than the standard methodology. Yeah. Given we have all as councillors suffered from uh, eight years out of 10, failing to reach the target, having the 20% buffer applied, having the planning tilt altered in presumption of all development, so the planning tilt's been altered, and really being strong-armed into accepting, uh, I'm talking about borough-wide here, um, into a, we've had to accept developments that we have not wanted to see. And they are nearly all adjacent to the settlement boundary on greenfield land, and actually the residents don't want to see it and we don't want to see it. 
So the Policy and Resources Committee did not make a recommendation to uh, to agree to the to the to the local plan two with its target of 240, but instead said we really feel that the core strategy, which is the thing, the part one that underpins the part two, uh, it, with its economic ambition for large housing growth is no longer the thing that we wish to see. Of course, it's a different administration. It's largely different councillors. And I felt really, really sorry for the hardworking planners in the meeting who had actually delivered a superb local plan part two with the constraint that it had to marry up to the core strategy, which is all about growth. And then the councillors at the Policy and Resources Committee said, do you know what? we're not about all about growth anymore our population is not seen to be growing massively we think that our growth needs to be modest and we need to align ourselves to the standard methodology i'm surprised they didn't cry or throw things at us at this point they've now gone away to work on the evidence base for the core strategy part one so it links up to a new core strategy so it links up to a new local plan too uh, or they will do if, if the full council votes on that and goes with the policy and resources committee recommendation. I think that the full council will vote on that in that way because all three parties agreed. So I can't see full council not voting on it in the same way. So that means there's now a hiatus whereby Pendle will not have a local plan part two. And this puts Cone at a great deal of risk because all the green sites around Cone are sitting there. We know of several of them. Looking at Alice, there's the Lenches um, near me in my ward, there's the Upper Rough. Um, there's also Gibb Hill, looking at Liz Hurley. There are these sites that obviously developers would be very keen, they're beauty spots really, essentially. They're where people have recreation, there are lovely walks, um and we would be as a neighborhood plan working group and we actually designated some of them as uh, local green spaces so we would be totally against this happening but we are still shackled to the 298 in this interim which is likely to be considerable and therefore i am very concerned about any delay at all we have to meet the basic policies essentially so so what's so go again what's the timing in terms of the neighborhood plan what do you think your timing is from where you are from where you are now to effectively submission to the local authority well i mean i'm looking at michael but we think that we just about got most of the uh evidence base of which there are 13 ready to be we started submitting them haven't we gina how many have we sent four four bits of evidence um, councillors to sign off we we sent two didn't we last week which was um the landscape and the marketing yes um and then we very much hope to be sending the design code and the non-designated heritage assets yes and then um michael's got a whole tranche of them all to do with environmental assessments coal authority update on the uh, local green spaces so we are now just pulling together the final things and the viability really has been the very last piece of that so, so then so then log i mean you know logically listening to that actually what you've got is you've got a study there that shows that actually three of the sites would be would be viable and the question is is what do those site allocations look like and, and what is it that we can do in terms of policy wording for those site allocations and then i would say actually you know out, outside of that but but sort of running potentially in, in parallel so it doesn't delay anything actually one of the things that we might be able to do is to look at trying to gather more evidence on one of the sites where where as i say you've got a decent relationship with 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 either a landowner or a developer that's interested in those sites so that we can See, gather yeah. more information to actually to actually get yeah. to a point where if you like we're able we're able to argue the case beyond the allocation does that make sense so that yes i uh, i think perhaps, i mean uh, there's a bit sorry i'm sticking my hand up there to say uh, you know some of these things some of these things on occasions you're a bit of in in uncharted territory so 
but but I think there is something that we can do to support the allocation wording and the site allocations to to enable them to ensure that actually the viability is referenced in the right way and we reference the stuff that, that Jerry was talking about as well. So we put it in the wider context. And then as I say, parallel to that, you come back to me with a site that you think is worth looking at and some contacts and, um, and I'll do the rest of it, which means that you, you'll end up with another you'll end up with another piece of support work that you probably don't understand in the first instance, but you just have to let us you just have to let us run with it and the resource that you access to be able to get the due diligence work done that actually firms some of those things up, which then effectively we could probably add as an addendum to to the viability work at potentially a point in time that is a slightly later point in time if that makes sense question mark when but we'll okay. get it, we'll get it done as quickly as possible you know david and, I, and i've just and i've just probably lost the plot there in terms of my colleagues and my friends but then i'm not on anybody's <laughs> christmas card list anyway so david uh, yes thank you for that um i think the, the, the other one to point out as well is that cone's allocation of the 240 let's say the 240 somehow got through then if you look at the allocation of the, the big pot that remains to cone it's only 12 over the remaining nine ah, years only if uh, all... but it's but but that of course does rely on development taking place in other places yeah. because obviously it relies on our extant planning permissions coming through it relies on the fact that people won't just turn their back on unfashionable parts of the borough and say, I'll tell you what, let's, let, let's, let's all put it in cone. And of course, the Pendle Borough Council planning officers might say, well, it all contributes towards the overall borough council pot. So that's one, one, one good thing, but with a caution. Um, if we did go for the 142, the likelihood I understand is that we'd have to have a 15 year plan. Yes. So we might have a couple of years exposure at 298, but then it'll be 142 thereafter. Um, and again, Cone's allocation should be small. Um, if you look at the numbers, it actually ends up being almost negative, um, just because of the amount of development that's taken place over the last 10 years in Cone. So we've, we've done our bit quite a lot so far. Um, I think us having a, a list of houses that come to over 300 in our pot, I think gives us quite a good margin for, well, do you know what, that one will never be viable. Um, and, and obviously your work has identified three, it's picked three sites, Although, oddly, I could only find one of them still in our final list. I don't know if I missed something there, but the two smaller ones don't seem to be in our actual list of 300 anymore. There might have been early ones that dropped off because we were probably concerned about them. Um, but, but, but your work seemed to identify them as being more strongly viable than one of our really fancied runners. Um, I think one, one thing I wanted to understand about the methodology for this is obviously there is a traditional way of saying what is the viability and we're looking at a slightly alternative version here. Um, so almost like in simple terms, just explain what's different in the terms okay. of the approach. And, and I'd heard a lot of in your discussions with Sarah, who is also my wife, by the way, um, I, lots of discussions along the time about, uh, you know, alternative uh, methods of, you know, using, a, using apprentices or tapping into environmental alternative ideas. So just sort of so, life, how they've come forward the report the report that you have at the moment is conventional full stop and we'll hold weight in that way what what we're looking at beyond that is actually how do we improve viability in a number of ways so so for example you know the opportunity to think about how you might how you might bring a site forward for development so if you've got marginal if you've got marginal sites we're doing some work where effectively we're saying actually this needs to be delivered out working with a college, the colleges and apprenticeships and actually what that tends to do is it tends to increase an educational cost if that makes sense however some of that is born somewhere else but it decreases the capital cost because actually you remove an element of labor if that makes sense because to all, you know, colleges won't mind me for saying it but to all intents and purposes you're getting free labor because what you've got is you've got trainers working on site and we know from modeling that we've done in terms of cost plans anywhere everywhere else that that at the moment can take out somewhere like 20 percent of the of the capital cost so actually, you know, you, we, it, it's looking at those things past the baseline model, if that makes sense, that are the things that we're talking about. In this instance, what you've got is a baseline model that says you've got three sites that actually we think, given the, you know, given the current conditions, given the, the current plans that we've seen for those sites, actually they are 
they are viable but actually then in addition to that what we um, well and this is what i'm saying one of the things that we can do is we can go a little bit further in terms of exploring one of those sites to actually look at the, the real costs associated with either building on those sites or remediation of those sites in a particular way, which will give us a better flavor and a better understanding of those conditions across the, 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 the sort of uh, the center of the, of the settlement, if that makes sense. And then beyond that, if there's an appetite to do it and you still got others, actually we can start to specify that with a relationship with the college, we can do the following things. Actually, if we look at phasing the development in a particular way, so for example, we've got heritage assets on any of them, actually phasing of those, phasing of the development in the right way actually improves, improves viability. And none of, none of those sorts of things in terms of thinking about actual delivery on the ground are generally included in viability studies in in this way so that's the bit that is effectively different that we're looking at that we're looking at moving forward with but at this stage as i say you've got a viability report that is conventional that actually if you threw it if you threw it at anybody what they should do is come back and say yeah fine we accept the results of, of that clearly there'll be some developers who wouldn't like to accept the results of it because they'll be saying actually my margins are too low on this but you know those are those if you like have got to be tested by the market when you get there if that makes sense okay yeah thank so you. so two things a i'm a bit concerned i hadn't noticed that two of the sites weren't in our list um so, why were they taken out of our list gina do you know two little tiny ones you think two little tiny ones um i'm not sure to be honest i'd have to look Look back. Look, look back and see whether it was landowners. The, the, the big site, which is in my ward and Cotton Tree Lane, we heard last week that the uh, person who is currently the occupant, the company that's currently the occupant, is now finalising a move to an industrial estate that's um, still within the borough, but um, more towards Nelson. So that site is actually moving forward and I'm looking at Jonathan mm. because he might know more about it than me. About what, sorry? Cotton Tree Lane. I don't know anything at the moment. Oh, there's, right. there's no news. The last I heard was they're putting a full planning application together. Right. Okay, cool. So, so is that. And that's active now. Right. They're, they're only doing all the reports that not they need right. to put together a full. Planning application, not reserve matters. Right. Full detailed application, which is probably why it's taking quite a long time. Right. Because do there's you, a lot, there's a lot of detail to go into the application. Do you, do you sort of have a time scale of that? Do you know? I mean, have you have you got any sense of when that when that's likely to be submitted as a, as an application? I suspect early in the new year. I'm guessing. Okay. Cool. Um, so again, useful, useful for this point in time, because actually one of the things that, you know, if, again, one of the things that that does is that would give us additional evidence, if that makes sense, because clearly actually somebody believes that they've got a site there that is viable, that they can make, that can, they can make something from. So again, it, it, it will give us additional, it will give us additional information. So we'll just keep an eye for that one. I would say to you actually, so one of the other things I would say to you is, is and again, at risk of really annoying my colleagues, are there, it's probably worth you then looking at your list of sites again and maybe yes. us plugging in others into into the model at this stage and, and working the, some of the other sites the key one for me is yeah. bunkers hill all of the and, land in bunkers hill is in public ownership and i'm aware that in january we are a priority area for the leveling up fund two and Pendle is focusing on unviable brownfield sites in its bid to the government. So, so Gina, given that you were talking about um, numbering of, I think numbering of sites, you might not have been, but actually, if you could, if you could give me, if you could give me what number that site is, because I'm not seeing Bunkers Hill on. I can't immediately find it, so it might be named under something else. So is it it's CNDP six stroke? I think it's number twenty seven. It's called it's called Land to the West of Bankfield Street. Land to the West of Bankfield Street. A K A Bunkers Hill. A K A Hill. And I think okay. it was it was fifty six, but we knocked it down to twenty six because there was the 
park permission and the tree planting and all that sort of stuff. So actually, on. that that site apparently, I've been told, does have capability for more houses on than that. Um, it is just merely that the Pendle <laughs> Council owns some of it, and <laughs> they have not given permission as yet. Do you have, um, so Gina, you will have a, a, a map of that site and yeah. the size of the site and all the rest of it. I mean, uh, question, next question would be, have you got any sort of master planning work for that particular site itself? Do you have a sense no. of, no, okay. So one of the things that, you know, again, one of the things that we might need to do is a bit a sort of bit of quick and dirty master planning work on that particular site so that what we can then do is look at sort of, indicative layout that then we can we can plug some numbers in on basically what you've got there um just to avoid is a belt of trees to avoid and that was something that pendle council came back at us with in their uh comment at regulation 14 fair enough we're not against that and obviously from a distance there is a potential relationship with the greenfield uh conservation area so there'd have to be some deference there. Um, but I think that that's it. Alice is looking. Yeah. I think that there's also some implications about allotment sites in that area. In Bunkers Hill? Yeah, in that area. So is this that, the infamous donkey yeah, site? Yeah, yes. Yes. So, However, that donkey is very old. And we are looking. At we, there are plan. some talks about that yes. at the moment. So, so yes. quite literally, this is drop the dead donkey. Oh, it is don't. not dead. It is not dead. <laughs> Poor it Dusty. Is, it has not ceased to be. Um, is he called Dusty? Oh, yes. Ah, <laughs> ah. Um, so um, it, it's an anomaly within allotments. It has not been transferred to the town council. It is still held by Pendle Borough. And it is the grazing land of Dusty the donkey, who is a very old donkey, um, because people have been talking about poor Dusty for... Oh, well, 30 years, odd years. Seven years, to my <laughs> yes. knowledge. Um, so... Uh, it's been agreed that it wouldn't be transferred to the town council, it would stay with Pendle Borough Council, and that the grazing for Dusty would exist in his lifetime, so he's not distressed by a move. Um, so that is something else to factor in about Bunkers Hill. Can I just ask, Sarah, um, if a planning application came in before we submitted our plans, would that mean that that land could not then be um, acceptable for our viability. I don't know. Save so, Michael. Uh, to my mind, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you looking to to continue to consider allocating that site and allocating it in a particular way, right? It may well be that as you get to the stage where it goes so far down the road in terms of planning that it, that it effectively knocks it out. But at this stage, yeah. it doesn't sound like it's there. So, no, it I mean, I, I would say to you, just that, so there's a couple of things here. Firstly, if I, if I was to say to you, I don't think it's just worth looking at one site, given what you're saying. So you might want to choose another site as well. So yes. effectively, what we've got is three three if you like live sites that you're interested in and that might be the ones with the with the higher potential for higher capacity if that makes on the sense. south valley yes. yeah so yes. come back to me with with those okay. um i think logically probably what we'd do is we'd say actually we need to do a bit of master planning work so that we've got some indicative sort of if you like strategic master plan for the site that says actually this is what it this is what we think it could look like which will then give us a number of of houses if that makes sense and and likely layouts which then we can just drop into the model and roll out in terms of the viability work again which then would allow you to actually potentially beef up the site allocations for those particular sites in a way reference the viability and it probably does it at this point in time without without too much extra work i mean i'll, I'll need conversations tomorrow and i'll have those conversations tomorrow but Gina, if I can come back to you tomorrow to say, actually, yes, I'm on, and actually, so, so I don't know whether it would be possible for me to do it tomorrow, but I might look to see if I can get an application to central government tomorrow for the master planning work on a couple of sites with a view to actually getting that signed off by the end of this week, which then means that work could take place reasonably quickly and and apologies for this it'll probably mean that somebody has to do it from google maps but it will okay. give us something to work with 
if that makes sense. Yeah. And then we can plug that back into the viability piece with a view to getting that out. You know, realistically, I suspect I suspect everybody will roll their eyes at me if I said this side of Christmas, but certainly shortly after Christmas, the beginning part of the new year. No, we're not rolling our eyes. We're, we're, uh, one, sound one, reasonable. One, yeah. one, one angle we could look at it is for the two sites that aren't in our final 17 were obviously in our 27. Yeah. And one was for eight sites, uh, eight units, and the others for 18. And we have other ones that are eight and 18 or similar yeah. sizes. And therefore, if the principle's established, the paper as written establishes the principle. And the only reason those two aren't in is presumably because the owner said, I don't, I don't, I don't want them going I, forward. That, that's absolutely so, true. And I think that I think it's just getting the narrative right in the report on that. So if we were to drop in two additional sites that actually okay. would prove viability on as well, and then yeah. add to the narrative to say, and we also check the following sites, which actually the, the landowners withdrew or whatever it was that they were drew for. Yeah. Actually, what you've done is you've then said, potentially all of these sites across the piece may be viable over this period of time. And in addition to that, these are the things that you can factor in if they weren't, if, if it was deemed at the point in time that the market had changed, if that makes sense, yeah? Yeah, I think that's a really comparative, yeah. uh, compelling narrative. And I think it's a bit belt and braces. So Gina, I'd be so grateful. I know that you've got loads of work on with FEA, <laughs> just giving me an eye roll. Um, could you, A, find out why it is that those two sites go back into the mist of time and find out? It'd be the beginning of this year, won't it? Mm. March time, that's when I was doing all the work. Harold around. Street and Lathe Street. They are. So Lathe, Lathe, Lathe Street exists. Lathe Street is uh, adjacent to Thomas Street. Yes. Oh, perhaps it's called something else then. Yes. Perhaps I'm wrong then. I think you might be. Oh yeah, Thomas Street. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, that's still in. That's still in. And and you really love that, and so would I. Um, and what's the other one, David? Lathe Street. Yes. Is yeah. that is that Green Works Not Lane? Yes. Yes. Oh bloody hell! They're all. They're <laughs> all <laughs> in. So yeah. actually, the, the I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking nonsense. <laughs> Gina's looking really celebratory. That's a piece of work that's off a list. They're all just called different names. Well, nevertheless, nevertheless, I go back to what I was saying before. Actually, if you're okay with it, I'm going to make an application tomorrow if yes. I can do it. Oh. And I have to say that, you know, me getting hold of a colleague tonight to do some to do some work for me at this point in time is likely to be well, it's, it, it's not likely to happen, but but actually, if I can get to my desk, what well, I will be at my desk tomorrow morning for seven o'clock. My colleagues won't be there until nine o'clock. But actually, if I can get it done, there will be a submission that goes to central government tomorrow for master planning support for two sites. Gina, Excellent. I need I need you to give me the two sites and the what we what you know, just give me the two sites so that I can look at the records that I've got to match up what they look like, if that makes sense, and what we already know about them. And we'll get a master planning package signed off, which then means what I'll do is I'll talk to, and it'll probably be Ben or one of his colleagues, I'll talk to him and say, actually, we want a reasonably quick and dirty done on these to, to be able to plug those in to the viability to the viability assessment as well, basically. And, and I, actually, we, yeah? I actually think that it would really help us as well um, with our levelling up fund bid in in january if we have these yeah, we right. could genuinely put them forward to the government um with some work already done and it wouldn't be pie in the sky airy fairy stuff so i'll see that in the other direction because because we meet with with central government on a regular basis so i'll say actually one of the things we're trying to do here is we're trying to connect a range of other initiatives up and this is the way that it makes sense to do it we've already connected some areas with the small towns one and they've accepted that and got a got a reasonably good settlement for um, actually quite a large and substantive site that has been derelict for a period of time. So that one's moving forward. So if I can connect that up in the other direction, I will for you. Oh, that would be splendid. And I think that I the think, people in Nelson will be pleased with that too. Yeah, I think I think that that, that will be particularly good because when, when when we're thinking about the levelling up fund bid applications, Cone is so far ahead of the game in terms of the the rest of the borough in terms of identifying sites like this where we've done the research, we know all about them, we know who owns we know them, the residents we know what, the, are what happy. the issues are, you know, and whether the residents are happy or not, as the case may be. So we, we've down already. Um, I think 
overlaying the piece about the creative funding methodologies as well, I think is also a good message to give. Because there may be parts of Nelson or parts of you know, Barn Oswick that are, are much worse than ours for some reasons. So therefore, overlying, overlaying that methodology, I think, would be an extra thing to, uh, to really beef up the application for the fund in the, in the, in the, in the final. Okay. Oh, we're all really excited. Gina? Yeah, can I just check which two sites um, we were thinking of? Is it Bunkers Hill and South Valley? Oh. I don't know. I'm going to go home, Gina. Right. Um, because we've got to push it an open door to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Cone that we all know is that there's hearsay. So I've heard some hearsay about the South Valley, but it's not based in fact. So I think we should... Bunkers Hill is an easy one mm -hmm. because it's, despite the donkey, um, it is in public ownership, LCC and Pendle Borough. And if you don't mind, I'm going to have a look at something in the cold light of day, but perhaps in the evening, and, and, and choose another one, but perhaps... Yeah, I'd be a bit careful about the South Valley one. Yeah, because it's um, in and it's out and it's out and it's in. Yeah, I, I think it needs a little bit more investigation as to whether it will be truly the best site to, to look at. Yeah, well, there were, there were, there were two there um, that are in and they're out, mm. actually. Um, so if you bear with me, Gina, I'll go away. Bunker's Hill okay. definitely on the table. And let's choose something else. And I suspect that we just need to choose something that we're feeling quite confident about that no, won't be subject to change. Of course, it'll be instantly subject to change at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, thinking about Dave and Michael, the fact that we want to get a sort of MOT checklist on our basic conditions, should we work in the background on everything else? Yes. And just sub and submit it in so, the basic conditions. So, my view would be. Yes, work on it. Get to a point where where you've got a complete a complete draft. One of the things that we can then do, uh, and and it's got a four week uh, a four week less than a four week turnaround on it. But we can we can throw it at effectively a dummy examination. Okay. So so that you know that will belt and braces everything for you if that makes sense. It really does, doesn't it? That would make me sleep much better at night. Look just, at Michael, but he's looking a bit confused or upset. What concerns me is that the, the, the work that we've been talking about clearly introduces a delay to the timetable. Um, I think the problem that I always have with this is being at the end of the food chain, if you will, in terms of preparing the plan itself, and then certainly the basic condition statement and a number of the other supporting documents. It, it, it sort of puts you in a quite unusual position to be sort of writing something without the full evidence base having been finalized. So I'm, I'm just a little concerned about sort of how we're sort of putting things together. I think if something goes to health check, then I think it should go with the proviso that this is a draft of a draft. It's not the finished article because things could change in the light of whatever that new evidence base may show. I just think there's a danger that people look at it and think that this is the finished article when in actual fact, it may not be. Dave? Um, so, so my view would be actually, uh, uh, firstly, firstly, the health check is, it will be for your eyes as a, as a qualifying body. It's not a document that you need to make public in any way. And actually my recommendation would be you get to a point where actually you do, you do that health check at the point where you know that you've got the draft that you think you're wanting to submit to the local authority, basically. So, so what should happen there is actually, it will be minor modifications that you need to, to make 
rather than anything rather than anything substantive and it just gives you the confidence then to actually submit to the local authority don't we also have the fact that now we've confirmed sorry sorry by error again that this viability study covers three sites within our final 17 and it proves the case what we're looking for there with a couple of others it's is, extra is the, icing, yeah. the icing on the cake we're just, we're just doing a bit of extra belt and braces stuff on this and actually yeah. what i have done whilst i've been talking to you is so i will be submitting tomorrow an application for master planning because my colleagues actually doing the piece of work they need to do now for oh, me. excellent late workers so so I don't, you know, and again, that needn't hold up the rest of your work, if that makes sense. I mean, I do think there's there's a piece of work to look at in terms of the site allocations themselves and the wording of the site allocation. But the viability piece at this stage gives you confidence that those three sites and, and in, interestingly, they go from 65 down to down to eight in terms of numbers of houses. Actually, those three sites are, are viable at this point in time. So, so you know, you should be reasonably confident, I think, in allocating in allocating the other sides because unless there's something that is a is a complete bizarre showstopper on one of those sites. So, you know, um, I don't know, Arthur's Arthur's sword, for example, or or some <laughs> very strange <laughs> some very strange artifact that is, you know so significant that actually the heritage on it would stop everything I, well I, that would put cone on the map if we were to find that's excalibur true. That's true. he would be delighted um and our town would be booming and then we'd have to find other sites yeah, all, all the other sites would come forward and it would be brilliant well we as amateurs are all as keen as mustard to progress this plan as fast as it can go and part of that as a borough councillor as well knowing what has happened with the delay on the core strategy and the local plan part two which is not going to be providing cone with any protection in the short to medium term so with that our plan becomes more important and i think it's more important that we crack on with it so if michael's happy to go with the sort of vanilla confidence of the viability I think as fast as we can, we should submit for the little MOT a checklist. And in parallel, you and your colleagues can be master planning Bunkers Hill and A another. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody happy? Is everybody happy? I don't want anybody to come and say they're not happy. Well, I mean, say it now is what I'm saying. I'm very, very happy. Are you very happy? Yes, indeed. So, so practically the way it will work, right, because I know the way central government work on this, let me get the master planning stuff signed off tomorrow. And then what I'll do is is probably within a couple of weeks apply for the, the health check. And that will effectively sit there and will be ready for you for whenever you've got a full draft that you're able to give to, to colleagues at intelligent plan examinations who do... I think Gina's already done it. Work, yeah. Gina, have you have you already sort of done a place saver for the MO6? Are we, what have we discussed on this? Yes, it was put in, and um, but it was done by mistake for some reason. It, it it's not. It in, don't, but, you don't need to. Don't don't worry about it. I can deal with it at my end. Basically, it's fine. Okay. So the plan is tomorrow. Two sites to you, one of which is Bunkers Hill. You yeah. apply for that, you crack on. Meantime, all those other 13 documents in the evidence base, plus the actual main plan, we do our best to uh, get off our desk as an advisory committee and onto the desks of the full council at Cone Town Council so that they're all signing it off. Because I now realise there's far too much to read, isn't there, for mm -hmm. any one meeting. So we're trying to get it all ticked off. We'll get some of it ticked off before Christmas by them, um, because there, there'd be too much otherwise. So we'll progress as fast as we can. And then in a couple of weeks, we should potentially have most things ready to submit for this MOT, oh. which would be in a nice position for Christmas. Yeah. 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 Everybody pleased with that? 
Michael's looking worried. I think Michael's crying now in the corner. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Well, we do have it on the agenda, don't we? All the various things. We do. We I, do. I, I think we need a wider discussion about what needs to be done. Okay. And, and what what a realistic timetable is. Um, I'm, I'm I'm still worried about submitting something to a health check to an independent group of consultants who may well come back and start to pick holes in it. Before you know it, we're back. You know we. Rather than stepping stepping forward, we've taken three further steps back. I I I, I just think that we're we're setting so with so many things to complete. I think there's a real danger that it, it, it's not going to come together quite as we'd like if we if we sort of rush this too much. Okay, yeah, well, the well, word the word I would say. Yeah. I would say actually you you need a full draft that you're comfortable with full stop yeah. right i mean i i think actually we can take you know take the viability report as it is at the moment and i'll and, and what i'll do is i'll make sure that the amendments to that are, are picked up if that makes sense yeah and we can and we can reissue that so you've got that document sat there that you can that you can use if that makes sense in yeah. the meantime i will progress the master planning work and we'll and we'll do the work in terms of the the other two sites through through the viability piece and actually the chance the chances are is that will coincide with you having potentially a full draft and all it all, all it will mean is it means that you just need to replace the existing viability report with the Boosted with the new one. one that we issue if that makes sense yeah it does and you'll it have does. and you'll have some diagrams for the for the master planning piece of work as well because you'll have a report for that okay um, I, nevertheless what i will do is you know, I'll do this one for tomorrow and then I'll give it a couple of weeks and then I'll do the health check one, which then means that actually what you've got by the time you get to the middle of December is that will be approved through central government and effectively IPE will have made contact with you. And then it's then up to you to determine the time scale that you give it to them, if that makes sense. Yes, and it when does. you're comfortable to give it to them. So all I'm going to do is the piece of work that lines it up so you're ready to push the button on it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Alice? Um, I'm just um, wondering whether we do need to be in a rush about this now, because I know that a few months back it was that we had to get it done before um, the local plan two was sorted. Um, and now that pressure has been removed. It is, so it is worse actually, Alice, now. It's worse now. It's worse now. So just to explain it to you, mm -hmm. so currently our our number, annual number, is 298, and there is no prospect, or very little prospect, unless something amazing happens at full council next month, of that figure coming down. And there's no prospect of the local plan part two being made in the short term, because they're redoing the core strategy. So all of this time, while that's happening, that we don't have a neighbourhood plan, all of those peripheral sites in Cone that we wish to protect mm -hmm. are at risk. So I think it's more important that we crack on with it now because previously we had the spectre of the local plan at least stopping building outside the settlement. It, you could now, it's an automatic uh, thing whereby it would be um, sustainable if it's adjacent to the settlement boundary. Mm -hmm. That's currently the case. If the local plan was adopted on 240, that wouldn't be the case. But it's, it's obviously not going to be 240 because the councillors won't vote that for that. It's going to be 298 for the foreseeable mm. future. That is the danger that we face. Mm. So it's more important that we move on with this neighbourhood plan than ever before mm. because we are the body that potentially could put a sort of force field round Cone and protect Cone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I, my my view on that is that uh, the the two nine eight, and I'm not sure it increases the risk at all. The two nine eight will be with you for some time mm. because the two nine eight is part of a, an adopted development plan. Yeah. So until replaced, it remains part of the development plan. 
the figure that was in local plan part two would only have ever been in an emerging plan that would have no doubt taken at least 12 months to get through its next stages yeah of inspection and, and my view is it, that 240 figure wouldn't have been given particularly appeal anything other than very little weight because that figure itself would be contested through the local would have been contested through the local plan examination process so i think you would have been left with 298 for at least a period of 12 months so i'm not convinced the risk has changed at all okay that's that's my view anyway i assume that the local plan part two would be coming forward faster than that um you know sort of uh, imagining it will be going for inspection in the new year but uh yeah i defer to your greater knowledge well well, well local plan part two it, its next stage would have been submission to the secretary of state there'd have been another consultation there would have then been examination then the examiners would have had to report my view is that take at least tw another 12 months right yeah right. It, it wouldn't be quick okay um the, the most recent one I've been involved in was St. Helens local plan examination. The hearings were in May. They're just advertising proposed modifications this month. So again, it's, I would imagine inspectors report probably heading towards May 2022. So I, th I think that's a rule of thumb. And don't forget they went through what's called regulation 19, I think. Yeah. 18 months before that right. so the 298 is going to be with you for some time yeah what, what what i'm not sure of but in terms of what you've said is based on what policy and resources have agreed is it now the intention that pendle will roll the core strategy and what what would have been local plan part two all together yes. into a new local plan yes because if that's the case, then it may well be um, the delay to changing the 298 figure whilst it may be extended from what the timetable would have been for local plan part two. It may be that you roll it all together and that delay is not as significant as perhaps first appears. Okay. Certainly if the officers have got, you know, They've certainly got the background work for local plan part two yeah. and i assume through all the monitoring work they you know they have do, done some work on what could be the review of various core strategy policies but the the headline is the 298 will be with us for some time jonathan as you know we've been at this for 100 years yeah 2016 is it yeah or 15 yeah. one of the two 16. Can anybody potentially put together a program of what we, of a, a pro, when I say a program, I'm speaking in, in terms of construction there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a program, uh, a time scale, like a Gantt chart of what we need to do, the time scales, because I would really like to get it finished before May 2023. I agree. And at, and at the moment, I feel like we're just, every, well, me, every, every single meeting, I leave thinking, we're nearly there. We, well, no. Oh. No, oh, yeah. I feel like we're just loose ends after loose ends. Oh, really? And I think we need to have some firm dates in place in order to bring it to a conclusion. Well, reports are coming forward every week. I think you will agree with that, Jonathan. Um, and obviously, this is being dealt with later on in the agenda, and it seems harsh to make Dave sit through our discussions. Oh, David, go on. I was just going to uh, add to the discussion about, about why it's important for Cone to have its plan. And that is, as you say, Michael, with the 298 still being a spectre, even if it's going to be then abandoned as part of a brand new plan, complete plan, brand new plan, as opposed to just a brand new part two, because they've got to remove the economic aspiration, elevation, etc., then I think it's more important now that Cone has its plan so that we can ring fence what it is that we're prepared to contribute to the party, whatever the number is from a Pendle perspective. So I think if we do that from our housing sites, our green spaces, our important design codes and ideas and whatever, then we're shaping our destiny sooner rather than later, rather than letting somebody else dictate it again. Absolutely. And, and if we've got that power, 
and if we get through our, our regulation 15 and get the ball rolling on that, then that means we've got something that we can say, well, actually, we've done our bit and we're now in charge of our own destiny. And the other reason that I'm really keen to do this MOT um, is that Pendle has only ever done one site allocating neighbourhood plan apart from us. And it's a small village in my ward um, of only 1,800 souls called Trawton. And that's the only one it's ever done. So it's not super, super experienced in doing um, site allocating uh, plans. And I just wish to have as much confidence uh, that we can muster uh, when we finally press the button on Regulation 15. But it sounds like we do have a plan. We'll deal with the rest of what Jonathan uh, asked later on. We have an immediate plan for tomorrow and, the, and, and the, the time up to Christmas in terms of viability. So if nobody's got any more questions for Dave, we will say goodbye to you. Oh, John, um, Jerry's looking uncertain. No? Oh, Jerry? Sorry about that, Sarah. Yeah, I was two two things occur. First of all, if this uh, two nine eight leaves um, developers with a sort of open sesame into anywhere, yeah. uh, will the planners um, support them on the basis of the two nine eight, knowing that the um, the inspector will always support it or can we use our local plans stage of regulation 15 almost as a sort of counter? I believe we do not have any planning wait until we are regulation 15. Yeah, I think that's a, a reasonable thing to say. Yeah. Once the plan is submitted, it starts to carry more weight. Um, it's really difficult to say any more than that because it would depend on the circumstances at appeal. It would also depend on what parts of the submitted plan have been objected to. No doubt the housing would probably attract the largest number of the more complex objections because we know we've got people waiting but in the wings to put forward greenfield sites that are not going to be in the neighborhood plan you know so that th that's going to be contested um but yeah as a rule of thumb on submission it starts to get gather some weight okay all right well thank you so much and thank you so much for thinking creatively dave um to help us out uh both in time scale and in the what feels to us unique situation of a beautiful town that actually is very affordable to people and therefore there aren't vast profits to be made from housing developments, just modest ones. Yeah. And at some point in time, I will visit. <laughs> that would be gorgeous. We'll, we'll take you out. <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you so cool. much. Gina, okay. I'm looking forward to an email from you. If that can come before... Well, as, as soon as actually as soon as possible tomorrow, if that's OK. Right. Well, I will send an email direct to you, Dave, and I'll CC Gina in and then poor Gina, who is at home with a child with COVID and various other things, is, is in the loop, but not but not um, with the responsibility. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. Marla, Thank you very much. You know where I am if you need Thank me. you. Thank you so much, right. Dave. Much Take appreciated. Care. Bye bye. Okay, so team, we've got item eight now, which is design code. Looking at Gina, I'm guessing she would call Way or not? Um, I think he is there. Is he? Okay, well, we have done we have done the non-designated heritage assets so in the interim we can come back to jonathan's question which is actually always on the agenda which is item nine so it's all the other things that need to be completed 
So we have given the town councillors our marketing prospectus for Cone, and we've given the town councillors our long range views analysis. And then we have, we are now looking at the list of non designated heritage assets, and we have looked at the viability, which it sounds like we could also submit to the town councillors for their seal of approval, because it's only the part one, if you like, it's not the, the master plan. Paul? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, could I just ask um, <clears throat> if the, uh, the, the documents that you've referred to that um, have been finalised or agreed, whatever, um, have, have those uh, been seen by Jerry and myself as um, co-opted members, the, those final, final um, versions? And if not, could we see a copy of those? Um, they have been to the um, the advisory committee before they were sent out to um, full council. So it's the ones we've signed off in previous meetings. The right. Meeting. So I was, just to clarify, then that there, there's no there's no difference at all between the things that we've seen and those. No. No. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So so we have sent to them the long range views analysis and the marketing prospectus so far. We are looking to finalise ourselves the design code, which it doesn't sound like we're quite ready to do, and the um, list of non-designated heritage assets, which I will be very grateful in uh, about your input. And then we've got a whole tranche of other documents from local green spaces to environmental assessments, is, is my understanding. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think including the plan itself, I think there are 16 separate documents. They've grown. It was 13 last month. Yeah. This yeah. month, earlier this month, on the 18th, it was 13. Now it's 16. They've bred. I, I, th I, th I think going back to Jonathan's point, um, and obviously a couple of things, a couple of these still remain unknowns because we're not quite sure how quickly local locality can turn around the viability work and the master plan that's been talked about um but I, what i'd suggest is that we identify a key town council meeting that we work towards for final approval and then we can work backwards from there when each piece it's looking like january's one isn't it if we are now finalizing things like the design code and the list of non-designated heritage assets it is looking like january do people know when is january's full council then we'll have given the councillors half the documents for december as well which is even better 18th. the 18th yeah i would have thought more february with what we've got to do, but that's just me. Perhaps I'm being a little bit of a doomster. I don't know. Yeah. You see, it's when you've got out, outside people, you know, if it's only, um, Sarah, can you do this by then? Then it's only one person, isn't it? Mm. Um, but it could be that we're nearly there. We can still hope for it, Alice. I don't think we're going to make, I mean, David was saying at the last full council that we'd make December and I didn't think we would, but I think it's good that we are at least now sharing the underpinning documents and it's building a narrative for the councillors that aren't involved in this. They can see how all the documents fit together and feed into the plan. Michael. Could I, could I just ask what would the, full council be approving is it the plan itself or is it the plan and all the supporting documentation the plan itself and all the support supporting right. documentation yeah. Yeah. that's a, that's a good point yeah because yeah, because that would have been the next point yeah. that 
probably, then I'm wrong. Then I think Alice is right. Yeah. It will be February because if it's after the health check and they've got a four week turnaround. <laughs> I think that's more realistic because Dave said the health check will take about four weeks. Um, and then he said he'd sit on it for two weeks. So that's at least six weeks away. Yeah, and having been through the health check process. Oh dear, you're smiling. Yeah. And having heard who will do it. Oh dear. Who are, who are a company of former planning inspectors. Right. Yeah, I think they will go through it quite thoroughly. Okay. So, and my guess is, you know, to justify the fee they get paid, if nothing else, right? They, they, there will be quite a number of changes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're going to be things that they, where they say it doesn't meet the basic conditions, but, I, but I'm going to say that there'll be, I would imagine, a substantial number of refinements. So we've got to factor that in. And we've also got to factor in that any documents we send to a full council have to be ready a full week and perhaps a couple of days beforehand, at least a week beforehand. So we've got that as well. Yeah. I, I, I think the other thing to ask yourselves is, do you really need full council to sign off some of the documentation? They have said so. Right, fair enough. Question answered. Okay. Oh, she hasn't got a hand. Oh, yes, she has. Sorry, Gina. Um, yeah, can I just ask Michael, can you send me a list of all the, um, the other documents for the evidence base so that I know what I have, what I haven't got and what we need, <laughs> please. Did I not do that in an email the end of last week? No, that I know of, I can, I can go back and recheck. Um, I certainly wrote it, perhaps I didn't press send. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's really annoying as well. You, you spent loads of time on it. <laughs> Liz. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go now, but I will get on with the job that I've been given and I'll check with Gina that the numbering is correct. Oh, thank you, Liz. I okay. really appreciate it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Liz. Have you send it? Have we all gone mad? Oh, okay. He knows what documents they are, and we just need to know. Alice. I'm just wondering, are we planning to give the councillors all documents yes. at one sitting? No. Or should we just strip That's what we're doing. doing. That's what we're doing. And then say, so is that correct? Now, I think, I think really the ideal would be we deal with them, you know, so that they've got two at the moment and they'll probably have, say, three or four by the next one. And it would be great to be ticking those off. They've passed that gate and they're back with, they're back with Michael. And I also think actually it's a better way of balancing the reading and the understanding. Yeah. No. Gina. Sorry, Alice, you need to be mic. I'm struggling to hear you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, what what Alice was saying was she was just basically saying it's a good idea what we're doing at the moment, Gina. We're drip feeding everybody the documents and then they pass that and we were i was saying well potentially then we've got four that will be signed off for christmas jerry just i know this is not my business but could these uh the individual documents be put on the respective agendas as they come forward uh at respective meetings so that they know that they've got to make a decision mm, yeah. next meeting sort of idea Gina um 
Well, the, obviously the neighbourhood plan is a standing item um, on the full council agenda anyway. Uh, what we can do is just do a subheading of the actual document so that they know what they're looking at. Perfect. Okay, so are you a little bit clearer, Jonathan? Um, I still think it would be better if it was written down. Okay. Somewhere, just just at least you know a timeline of events that yeah, need, that needs to happen. Yes. Not uh, you know not saying it needs to happen immediately. No. But I, you can't beat it when it's written down in front of you. Yeah. Line by line. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, could we just agree the the full meeting that it's going to and what the deadline is for the paperwork to go out? We got that information. Um, well, we'd have to sort of work back with that. Uh, we'd have to sort of, if we want to have passed the design, the sorry, if we want to have passed the sort of basic check MOT so that the whole thing is ready for February, then we have to work back. And I suppose, therefore, that that would be the 18th of January, wouldn't it, for them to have seen all the parts ready for us to submit for the basic check? Yeah, I think it sounds like it's, it's we're aiming for the January full council to see the the bundle of documents to say yes for it to go then to the health check. For them, that, right? that then to be signed off for the February one? Well, if they can turn it around within four weeks. Can. Or three weeks, really, isn't it? Because mm. if you say council approves it, then it's got to be back within three weeks to have one week for council papers to go out for February. Which doesn't sound like, if you're saying four to six weeks for a locality review, it might not be then. Yeah. I mean, you could say, of course, what what as you as you touched on earlier, Alice. What what you're doing? If you've got your list of sixteen and they're all and, and they're all ticked off, then if the locality health check starts to un, you know say you need more on this or more on that, it might just be as you say they're just small tweaks and nothing fundamental. We're hoping. Well, we hope. So it could be that it does aim for February, but that would be with a massive following wind. In which case you're into March because there might be some work to do on the back of the the, 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 the health check review. Michael. My, my suggestion would be to go for the February meeting and get the health check out of the way. Okay. So that the full council is, appro the is, is approving the final document. Okay. What worries me is the health check comes up with something we've never spotted. Yeah. It's a significant change, and then you've either then got to go to back. Do the whole thing again. You've got to go back to full council, or you go out with something that somebody on full council or elsewhere says, "Well, this is not what we approved." Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that totally makes and sense. I think the other thing with the health check is that I assume that Dave has some influence in terms of chivying people along to say, well, you know, we need to turn this one around a little he, bit faster than the other. I think he's very senior indeed, yeah, hence yeah. us being a trailblazer for this special type of uh, work. The fact that he's got one of his colleagues to already start work for us this evening suggests that. Jonathan? Where, what firm does David work at? He works for a charity that is called locality and locality is really a subsection oddly though a charity of the department of leveling up within government so doing the working backwards from there then if we want it so it's at the february full council which i presume is something of the order of the 20th ish or whatever do we know when it is i'll tell you then you've got to knock a week off for paper preparation. 15th. 15th, 7th oh. of February. Well, the 8th of February. 8th of February. So you're looking to have the papers ready by the 8th of February, which means that you need the locality thing to have kicked off by Christmas Day to give six weeks. All right.
Now, is that all the documents though? Because they'll have obviously seen half of them at least, probably, and ticked them off, I suppose. They said yeah. they wanted two weeks prior, whether it's just give them some three weeks and that's easier. Yes. So it, it, if we do some three weeks, we're, we're doing some we're two doing months some before, aren't we? And then, and then we're down to the main plan, possibly trying to have some, yeah, okay. So there might be a filtering through whether everything's two weeks is a challenge. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, we also um, obviously need to make note that we need to give people time to read these documents as well. Um, mm. or if we send them just a week before the meeting, then it's not really going to be good enough. Um, we, they need a couple of weeks to read them, really, I think. Uh I presume the locality health check, although it might be overall four to six weeks, presumably there's going to be, there could be a sort of no surprises type approach. And if a week or two into it, they're saying there's a concern here or there's something there, or this is going quite well, you know, we're not identifying. I don't think they give you an update. So Do they give you an update? No, you just get it no, at the end. That's a mean approach. That's, yeah. that's very, very mean indeed. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't do a, a construction project and say, actually, you know, we finished it, but it looks, it's all upside down. Sorry. <laughs> or I, I would never have done an audit or I whatever and say, that. and say, you know, we're, we're five weeks into it. And by the way, it's all catastrophically <laughs> wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, Michael's going to write it down. We're going to see what's feasible. We have a lot to do. Our other councillors have a lot to read. Go on, Michael. Could we not do it in stages? You, you know, th things like the non-designated heritage report, local green spaces, um, the, flood, the flood risk is not going to change. We we should be able to sort out the we should be able to sort out the strategic environmental assessment, habitat <laughs> assessments. Oh <dear>. um, <laughs> Apologies, I forgot I wasn't on mute. We should be able to sort those out now. We've got the environment agency coming back to us. Landscapes done. Um, you know, so we could do it in two two phases. Get, we get, sort of are. As soon as the get one get one lot of documents signed off in January. Uh, February. Have, I'm sorry, sorry, December. Uh, We're well, doing December. December then. Uh, maybe some in January, but, but then. The February meeting concentrates largely on the plan itself, the consultation and the basic condition statement, which are the three submission documents anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Well, you can write it down, please, and then we'll hope to stick to it. But we know that there are some external... Oh. Well, who was first? Was it Paul? Yeah. Oh. Come on, Paul. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, pick up on, I, I, I think I heard the suggestion that um, the the health check process, the four week process might start on Christmas Day. I just <laughs> want to uh, suggest that it would be a bit unrealistic to expect the, the four weeks to be completely unaffected by Christmas. That's true. That's true. And that was what I was sort of just saying that obviously we can write down a sort of hopeful list as we move these things forward but with some extra people involved we can't be certain gina um yeah can i just say we don't want to take too much to the december 4 council because the budget decision needs to be made okay so well i mean what we're hoping gina um is that actually there won't be a lot of discussion about it because we've emailed them you and me to say please don't hold on till december please tell us now on page 47 that map is wrong or on page 106 that is the wrong caption we need them to be doing it now so actually if people start cavilling at the meeting that would be annoying we need them to start now to do it so that's when it comes to the full council, it's just, here is a vote on it. Do people like this? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Alice. 
Which documents are we going to present to the next full I council? I think it's looking like the next full council will have the long range views analysis, mm -hmm. the marketing prospectus, mm -hmm. the list of non designated heritage assets, and the design code. Yeah. Oh, and the viability study. All oh, right, okay. So that's five. Yeah. And as my Possibly also well, I think we might be going a little bit too much for the first meeting. Well, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're, not so, they're not so heavy. See if we can get one of those as well. Gina. Um, yeah, uh, we haven't actually formally um, signed off the non designated heritage. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> no, 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 we haven't signed it off. But what I'm saying is. We're hopeful that we will have done by December the 20, well, 14th of December, which is a fortnight from now. We haven't signed off the design code either. No. No. Jerry. Uh, Sarah, sorry, I have to go now. Okay. Can I just say on the design code, I think it's an excellent document. Uh, with the amendments that you've suggested, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's perfect. It reads well now. I was really pleased with the way it read when I read it again today. Mm. Bye, Jerry. Cheers. Bye. Gina, we don't have way, do we? No, do you want me to ring? I've, I've texted him. Do you want me to ring him? Yeah, go on. Have you seen all the comments that people have read in? Yes. Gina's been forwarding, and then I sent my little pernickety ones. You found another one, though, didn't you? I found a spare the. You found a spare the that I've missed. Way. <laughs> Indeed. Stop with the way puns. Well, anyway, <laughs> while we're waiting for Wade, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yes. Are we genuinely, genuinely happy with the design code now? I think it reads really well. I think the problematic problem of page 58 is solved. Um, it looks so much more cone now throughout. Paul? Uh, thank you. Um, so, well, sorry to uh, rain on your parade, but um, okay. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree on page fifty-eight. Uh, well, I've, I've made two changes on page fifty-eight. I don't know whether you saw my email this afternoon. <laughs> I've seen your email. I don't understand okay. where the big paragraph on the blue section on the right has come from, because it's completely different to the last iteration. Yes, um, if, if you remember in the last meeting. It was a, we we discussed about contemporary design. And I think yeah, that, that, and that word's that been it. and that word's been dropped. Yes, it shouldn't be dropped. If you remember, and actually that is another thing on page fifty-eight that needs to be done. Um, we agreed that what looked weird about that that page was that it only mentioned contemporary design and its approaches. And I said, I'll write a sort of mirroring uh, section, just a sentence or two, about conservation areas and heritage design, and therefore we covered both angles. But I wasn't expecting him to drop the one that we discussed last time. Indeed. So now it reads the opposite. Yeah. Um, it doesn't encourage... Um, it, it, the, the document did say... Um, it is recommended that contemporary architectural solutions should be considered. No one was in dispute of, of, of that statement. It was what followed about how it should be evaluated and scrutinized. And it implied that that uh, scrutiny would be greater than any other type of design, which is the problem I had with it. So now that's been completely dropped. Which... No, we don't want that. Could, yeah. could, could you, for Gina, um, just take that that section that we did discuss last time and just fill it slightly so that it 
Because the idea was we were meant to have a paragraph on the contemporary design and how we treat that, and a paragraph on heritage buildings or places within conservation areas and how we treat that. So I did my little bit, but I wasn't expecting, you're absolutely right, him to drop the right. thing we discussed last time. Yeah, okay. So um, can I just say, I mean, in general terms, I, I, I find that the, the long paragraph, the one about the heritage, I just find that rather prescriptive in its current form. So okay. shall I suggest um, I mean, obviously, this is running and running, and I'm concerned that <laughs> we'll never get a conclusion to this if we're not careful. But I do think it's really important because you can, I, I keep saying this, you can, you know, you can inadvert inadvertently um, introduce something which has unintended consequences uh, yeah. things like this. Um, for instance, when you're talking here about um, such buildings, this is within conservation areas and adjacent to listed buildings, uh, such buildings would be expected to have chimney stacks. Now that is, um, if, if you envisage that in relation to housing, that's one thing. But what, what if you're dealing with a, um, um, you know, a completely different type of development and, and yet you've got a requirement that it must have faux chimney stacks stuck, stuck all over it. That could yeah. have disastrous consequences. It could I, I be totally worse than agree. Ever did. So I just, I, I think there needs to be a little bit of a, a review of that. And I won't labour the point anymore now. I'll, I'll look at that. I haven't had time to, to look at it in any more detail before tonight and submit any comments, but I will do that. Okay. Um, can I just uh, to really labour the point on page 58, and I'm sorry to do this, but I do think we need to get it right. Um, can I just go through some of the images? Um, the um, one that, well, I don't know whether, I've got them in front of me here. This, yeah. this one here. Um, the, Which one where? The stone set. Yes. This one. I set took, from, I set from, top, set from top. I, I, have no comp I have no complaint about that other than, could we rotate it through 90 degrees so it looks like a, a paving material, not a walling material? I mean, I, I could certainly design a, a building or two with stone sets as a cladding material, but I'm sure that's not what's intended. But that, that kind of, you know, without any more detail, that is kind of the way it comes across at present. Right. It just you know, you know, the image just wants rotating through 90 degrees. Are you capturing this, Gina? Yeah. Um, the bottom left image, and I, I, I'm, I'm curious, and I may be wrong, but it looks an awful lot like natural stone to me. Not very um, nice natural stone, necessarily. It, it, but it's artificial stone, I believe, I'm looking at Jonathan, taken from the development on Skipton Road by the park. I took it at NR Engineering. The storm used there is is natural storm. Oh no! Is on, it? On that, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> on on that Skipton Road elevation, and it's bricks to the rear, which you can't see from the main no, road. No, I took it. I took this from the side. And the the roof tiles. I didn't take the roof. The roof tiles are tiles, but they look like slates. Right. No. I took I took the side of the side of the of the building on Skipton Road. Well, is this on the, uh, one of the documents? This is on the updated design code document. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's bottom uh, bottom left. This one here. It, well, it, I, I, I just know for a fact it's not artificial. Okay. <laughs> All right. I did yeah. take Paul. I did take another photograph of of stone that is artificial stone. I think from the lower rough. I think I did, but I didn't like it. <laughs> so I used this one. There must be something inherent within me. I thought this was artificial stone, but like good artificial stone. You, you'll probably find you don't like any artificial stone, so that's, oh, that, and I okay. would share your view on that pretty much. Um, anyway, so um, if we could, if we could find an image that is actually what it says it is, that's. I'm that's so sorry. Probably, I'll rest that there. <laughs> I was in, I was feeling confident about it. I'm sorry. That's well, my fault. Sorry to be nitpicking, but 
you no? know, that I think it is important. And the, the one last question I have is about the bottom right image, which is the UPVC windows. Yes. I, I just wonder why we've chosen what must be a, a fairly atypical example of UPVC windows when the this kind of discussion we had at the last meeting was, you know, we need to recognise the fact that, you know, on a lot of modern developments, or, you know, contemporary, you know, uh, more recent development, shall we say, in outside of the conservation area, then we are looking at commonly um, uh, UPVC windows. Yes. But that actually is UPVC windows trying to look like uh, leaded light 1950s windows. And I just wonder why we're... Well, actually, that. you know what? I actually took mullioned windows, which is again from Skipton Road, as UPVC windows. But then when I'd taken them, I was going to take my house as mullioned windows. But then when I saw that I'd taken this one as UPVC windows, I thought, do you know what? That's better than my house because it's new. So then I was in the dilemma of trying to find a UPVC window that didn't look like these mullioned windows. And we drove around for quite a while, didn't we, David? And we kept finding them. We, we went to Castle Court and they looked like this, like the mullioned windows. And I was trying to find a point of difference. So feel free. Um, I'll, I'll happily go and find some artificial stone. In fact, I would think I have a picture of it. <coughs> like the look of it from the lower rough um but if you can find something that's not a mullioned window but is upvc that you feel represents it okay i'll it. do what, i'll do what i can yes <laughs> oh you know i'm sorry i tried my best i was just trying to find something that looked very different from the mullioned windows i, and I understand that not mullions okay You'd be surprised how many of them are. I think you'll have rich pickings in Trojan. Yeah, but we don't want to do something really ugly, do we? We've <laughs> <laughs> known about Trojan. Go on, Gina. Um, yeah, just to let you know, I've, I've tried to ring away, but he didn't answer. Uh, um, so I left him a voicemail, but I just presume something must have happened. So oh there he is, part attempt. Well, we hope it's not a bad thing that's happened. We hope it's a fabulous thing that's happened. But in any case, I don't think that we're quite ready to sign it off as yet with the little tweaks. Because we've all sent some things, haven't we? Um, David, I don't know whether you're going to look at it anymore after you've been to St. Helens tomorrow. Okay. So we've all sent him some things. We're going to ask him to orientate the stone sets differently. Paul's going to look again at the contemporary and the heritage sections on that page. I'm genuinely going to choose an artificial stone building um, instead of just looking at a modern building and assuming it's, it's artificial stone. And Paul, you're going to find a UPVC window that isn't such and isn't mullioned but isn't truly awful. That's the other thing that I kept finding when we were driving around Cone. These massive windows that were fake wood. Um, they're either mahogany or light oak. And I, ha I personally have a real problem with them and therefore didn't want them to be in the plan. But Sarah, there's, there's, a booming trade. there's a booming trade in painting um, yeah. mahogany uh, coated plastic windows because <laughs> uh, they've gone out of fashion and uh, presumably that everybody's painting them grey and then soon the whole of that grey will disappear and everybody will paint them pea green um, well no actually what will happen is you'll have a three colour approach so the, the grey paint will peel off reveals yeah. the uh, horrible mahogany um foil underneath which in turn will start peeling off and then you'll see the white pvc underneath that glorious we look forward to that in the years to come alice um i just get a little bit confused of whether i'm what looking at the correct draft um i um obviously had a little look through um and looked at that map that we discussed yes and saw that oh wallace hartley's grave was still there mm. on that map and i was 
I was surprised because I thought, oh, well, is this the updated version or am I still looking at you the original? You were looking at the updated version, but you pointed this out to Gina. Mm -hmm. Gina has fed this back to Way, mm -hmm. so presumably those Wallace Hartley grave labels, etc., will now be gone. And I'm sure that you'll probably want to brain us over page 58 um, because you have sent him so many images. I've sent him so many images. And some of the things I've sent him images on now are no longer are no longer categories even. So how will that work with the next um, document well, that we get get through? Will it will it show that it is like the third well, this updated? This will be the or, fourth. This will be the fourth. fourth. Yeah. And um, Gina, I, Gina and I discussed it this afternoon. And she said to me, do you know what? It really is small tweaks. And it genuinely is over a 70-something page document. It really is small. Even if we orientate the stone sets separately and we give them a new UPVC window, which, by the way, is in Mark Chung's house. Um, he might be sad. He's no longer in the plan. Uh, he didn't even know he was in the plan. Um, <laughs> it'd be quite funny if he opened it and then found that he was in the plan. That's my, it's my bedroom. <laughs> So um, I really do think it's a work of what, what would you say, Gina? It's an hour, an hour of tweaks, no more. Um, yeah, I think the, the stuff that's been mentioned tonight, I think, will be pretty easy for, for him to amend. I would have thought, anyway. When, when none of us suggesting the sort of meat of the report changes, are we? It's small now, small but important, but small. Yeah. Everybody happy with that approach? So bearing that in mind, do we have to have a meeting to sign off? Let's think about this. We've got the design code, version four. We've got the non-designated heritage assets, which I know most of you have not been through because you've only had them for a couple of days. It would be great if we could get those off our desk, actually and metaphorically, and onto the other councillor's desk. It would make us all feel good for Christmas. And it's possible that one of the shorter reports of Michael's might also be in that category, um, the environment one or green spaces, or I don't know, looking at you, Michael. Habitats. Yeah, I, I, I don't see uh any issues in completing the local green spaces report. Okay. Because the, the, the text of that, as far as I'm concerned, is finalised. There's the, the, some map changes that need to be done. Um, the strategic, strategic, I've got to say, strategic Environmental Assessment Habitat Regulations Assessment. That sounds thrilling. Um, it's pretty much a technical, technical document. So I think. I'd suggest that needs signing off as quickly as possible because um, ahead of submission, what we need to request from Pendle oh. is that they are happy with the conclusions. Right. And generally, that's just a, a simple sign off because it's highly unusual for the local authority to disagree with the three statutory bodies. Okay. But I think if we can get that out of the way as quickly as possible, it's just one thing less one thing less to worry about. Okay. Um, the, the one thing I do think, given that you'd be talking about the design code, the one thing I think that does need to happen with that, and I think we still have time, given the, what we've talked about in terms of the the expanding the timetable government advice on that is that design codes have been consulted upon locally okay now at the moment that really isn't in there is it other than the no. sort of walkabout that you've had no um, and actually if we were to sign it off if we were to get it to a point where we could sign it off on the 21st of december then it means we could start the new year while we're waiting for the uh mot etc a health check we could start the new year with a consultation potentially or even we could even potentially do something on social media but not formal meetings 
over Christmas because people may not find good films on television. Alec. I don't think we should really think about doing it over oh, Christmas. No. I'm only saying yeah. that for I think a longer it, consultation. Yeah. Right. We should for still long, carry on in the yeah. new year. I'm for just it. meaning if it's ready and it's something that we can put yeah. on our website, That's we fine. definitely should yeah. have some like a meeting. Oh yes, yes, yes. but not just no, during that no, Christmas no, no. period. No, 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 I agree. Trying to give it a longer time. So what I'm coming to is that actually, if we've got four documents, that we potentially would like to send to the rest of the town council by the 14th of December. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, five, five documents. Oh, no, 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 we're not the design, the design thing. We've got all the interviews of the party prospectors, they're already done. Yeah. And then we've got, not this thing is going to suggest it, Design code and viability. Yes, we won't send them the design code, or will we? <laughs> I, I, look, I look for advice from Gina. Do, before we go out to public consultation, should we get this signed off by full council? Yes, you think? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So, in that case, we've got five documents. We've got the design code, the habit, the green spaces, the non -des Sorry. Oh, okay. Go on then. What what have we got? We've got long range views and marketing. That's gone. They've gone. We've got long range views and marketing perspectives. They've gone. Already gone. Yeah. You've got non designated heritage assets. Yes. You've design got code. The viability study. Yeah. The design code. Do you want to add in green spaces as well? And then you've got the sustainability habitat regulations one to give you five more. Yeah. Which gives a grand total of seven being signed off by council on the 21st. Yeah. Okay. I, I personally think that's rather a lot. Yeah. Well, they've already had these for a week. They've already had two of them for... Yeah. They've only had two of them, though. I mean, the, the local green space is quite a large document. I mean, the environmental assessment isn't that bad. It's only a, it's not that long. Um, but again, the, the non-designated heritage assets, that's also quite a big document. I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I, I'm so keen to be cracking on with this and knowing that we've got lots of other big documents, you know, until very recently, we actually, until the last full council, we genuinely thought we were going to give them all, all the documents in a one and we're not. We have broken them down into roughly half if we do this. My concern is that if you give them too much to look at, they won't look at anything. Well, well let's have a look at, let's have a look when we can meet, because if we can't, if we can't meet before the 14th of December. That heritage document's been out for, for donkey's years though, hasn't it? No. No, we've done quite a lot of changes to it. Um, mm. I only finished it no, last no, week. No, but if you think though, they've seen earlier drafts of the they heritage have. assets and the green spaces and all those. That's and all true. we're doing is adding on a bit more. What we could so they're do not do brand that. new. No, they're not brand new. What we could do is say, you've seen all of these before, and in the, in the email, this is what's changed. Holy Trinity Church, um, Bethel Chapel, uh, Lidget Cottages, etc., etc., and then that way they could choose to read the whole thing again, or they could just focus on what's new. Is that a reasonable approach? Well, it's probably better to highlight what has changed. Yeah, um, it just concerns me because obviously we've, we've got to get the budget sorted in December. So if we've got five documents on top of that, then. Sarah, I don't see the harm in, in perhaps splitting the documents in half, having an X number at one meeting, having an, another set of documents at another meeting just to spread the load. I mean, it's only a month. But that's what we're proposing anyway, because we'll have different documents in January. There were 16 pieces of evidence base. So if we give can, seven... Can then... some be presented in February? Sorry? Can some be presented in February? And then we decide in March. You know, sign it off finally in March. We want everybody to be on half time to sign off. 
Mm. Having had the locality health check and stuff. Mm. We as the advisory group are looking at them all. Yeah. So that Michael can top and tail and then send off to locality for their review. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're, we're doing this kind of like a bit of a similar job to FES, you know, FES deal with finances, etc. Deal with the detail, which then, you know, the other the councils at full council trust that the FES committee has, you know, made the correct decisions for them to advise full council. I suppose we're not doing a dissimilar job than to that, are we, really? So, what do you think, Alice? Well, I think it is such an important document that the councillors as a whole need to see what we're proposing and they need to really have the time to, to look at it. Um, but I think it is doable still. But what we need to do is to have it written down what we're going to be giving the councillors at certain points and what we hope to give them what we hope to as you said they've already had two of the the documents can we give them another two next week or yeah, yeah this week i hope so yeah i can hope so and so i think five is realistic yeah at the next meeting so looking at you gina. um but we've got to remember it's the budget yeah. as well so looking at you gina we've we've all gone through the design code and we've now found some more tweaks. Could we as a group say that we want those tweaks to be put into the next draft, draft four? And that could we sign that off via email as a group, agree to sign us off via email when we get that, because it's only tweaks. Um, and then at that point, if we all agree via email, it can go to full council. Uh, not full council to the actual councillors. Yes, yeah, sorry, I meant yes. that. I meant that. Yeah. But to be on that, mm. to be on that one. Yeah, if we just stick to the amendments that have been proposed tonight, as long as nothing new comes up, um, we can say that once he's meant those amendments, we can. I can obviously circulate that to all members of this committee, uh, and if everyone's in agreement, then. You can send it out to full council as soon as, soon as we as soon as we can. Read it. As soon as it's done. However, David had some tiny tweaks that he was going to send. I suppose, really, essentially, these tiny tweaks that you're sending, you're still a town councillor, so you could still send them. So, shall we take that approach for the design code? Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and for the non designated heritage assets, what we can do, Gina, is we can um, say what's new because everybody's seen most of it before. We can say all the new bits that have changed. But we need to give these councillors some more time to look at it because they're more interested in it. So, what about we give these councillors that are on this advisory committee or co-opted members another week to look at the non-designated heritage assets mm -hmm. and then again if they wish to make any changes they can be reflected in the document you know if they find a property that i have done a poor job on like david pointed out with the hippodrome let me know and i'll be straight on it and then that's another one then that we can agree via email and send off in that pack to full council. Yes? Um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously we need to send them out to the rest of the councillors as, as soon as we sign them off, basically. Yes. yes. So I think that we give everybody on this committee another week from now to sign that one off via email is that reasonable um you have to ask the council is that if they think if they think that's reasonable um, to be able to go through it do you think it's reasonable they'll have um they'll have a fortnight but of course they have seen most of that before it's like 
Yes. Yeah, it's like six new properties. They could read the whole thing again, or they could just look at the six. Um, so, okay, so that's a way forward with that one. Um, the viability is what the viability is, so they can have that one tomorrow, can't they? Yeah. In that it's like our place saver on viability. And I, then, I, think, I think on the viability, you probably need an introductory paragraph as to what it is. Okay. Yeah. So it's obviously supporting. And, you know, we know we've, we've got three sides. It supports what they are. It supports the viability of brownfield developments, or in the case of the cotton tree one, part, part green, part brown. Um, so I think it's, you know, just, 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 just to explain it and put it in context for them. Okay. All right. Would you like me to do that, Gina, or are you happy doing that? Um, I could probably put something together, although I am working. I am working on FES. If you want to draft something, Sarah, then I can. Um, okay. Have a look through it before I send send it out. Okay, so that's another one gone. So then, looking at Michael, um, which one or two would you like to give us for us to have perhaps another week on? The local green spaces and the strategic environmental assessment. Okay. And when when will it look like we'll be able to have those? Um, strategic environmental assessment, environment agency have promised the reply this week, I think. By tomorrow, I think they said. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I'm hoping that's a reasonably swift set of changes. So early next week. Local green spaces, the text is amended, it just needs some map changes, but I probably won't be able to do those until next week. So both of them mid next week. Okay. So if you let us have those mid next week, yeah. then we've got a week and they would be the last two documents that the councillors would have, that they would have had all the others. And then they'll have seven prior to December. But I think we need to state again that any corrections need to come before the meeting and there isn't time for discussion at the meeting. This is for them to scrutinise in advance. Well, a lot of them they have seen before. It, yeah. They're just update updates. Yeah. You're looking very thoughtful, Gina. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering. I'm not sure if we can sign off documents that haven't been on an agenda. I don't know if um, if Naomi can clarify. Oh, no, it's not. It's not full sign off beforehand. It's the fact that they're supplying corrections to us so that they can do that on uh, the council meeting. Yes, that's it. We're not asking them for sign off before the meeting. We're asking for the corrections before the meeting. But they would need to see the final draft with the corrections for sign off. So if they're sending you in submissions, I believe that's why they'd ask for it two weeks prior so it can get changed. You can't really ask them to sign something off if they haven't seen the amendments. No, fair enough. Well, I think the sooner that we get them to them, the better, actually, then. There's no point delaying. Um, whether we actually get to sign them off in December is a moot point. If they've seen them, they've made their corrections to them, and even if we have to bring them back and they have 12 documents in January, some of which they've seen before, then that's what we do. Gina's still frowning. I know. I just I think it's a, a lot of documents, and I just think we'll get moaned out. Yeah. Well, they, should try, they should try five years on the neighbourhood plan <laughs> working group. Then they'd, then they'd feel. Yeah, I, I do feel the same. I think it, it'll just overface people and then we won't get anywhere, if you know what I mean. It's better to just sort of drip the feet. I think, I think if, we, if we ask for their amendments before December the 21st, which I point out to you is basically a month, mm -hmm. and they'll be getting a lot of documents like well, they've had two, they'd get another one tomorrow and they'd get an, another two or three in a, in, a, in a week or so. They did ask for a minimum of two weeks. Yes, but if we ask for their corrections, 
even if we don't sign them off and we then mm. put the corrections in and bring them all back with some new documents in January, then we have more than given them a load of time. We can, but try. Hmm? Yeah. Because there's no getting away from it. There were a shed load of documents. No, if we just gave them two a month every month, we'd, be, we'd still be here in 2023. And Councillor Nixon would be, I don't know, <laughs> in despair. Yeah, and if we saved up all 16 documents to be two weeks before the February meeting... That would also be awful. Then I'm sure we'd get kicked back on that one. So doing it bit by bit, iterative process, nice and gently. This one you've already seen before. This one has got some tweaks in it. This is the way to sort of soften the blow there. Yeah. Yeah. It's all we can do and it's the best we can do. And if we don't actually sign them off in December, I don't matter because they're, it's on the, they're on their way. We might be that they're happy with them and, and we can send them off in December. We just don't know. Okay. All right. So actually, it looks like we don't need another meeting before December the 21st, because we're just getting on with it as a committee and um, communicating via email. What are you doing? It's my worst Christmas party. Oh, excellent. So I won't be here. I'm sending apologies now for the 21st of <laughs> December. I'll be at seven o'clock. God knows what oh. state, state I'll be in. Oh dear, seven o'clock. Well, we're starting at two. Oh, oh okay. We are, we are builders. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> okay, all right. Because I did think seven o'clock was a little bit keen, but thinking it started at seven o'clock as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I don't think we did. Hopefully. A lot of the documents are well received anyway, so on yeah. that, my vote probably won't be missed. <laughs> so, so, I don't think we can do a date and time of the next meeting is what I'm saying looking at Gina. No. It looks like we'll be meeting in early January and perhaps you and I need to discuss this in terms of, you know, the public consultation and so on, depending how the design code goes, because if the design code does go, then we want to maximise the amount of time whereby people can comment. And Gina and I discussed earlier this afternoon all about starting to put the, the things that are signed off by the council on the website so there isn't an, an indecent hurry right at the end um, and how we're going to present that in a way that's both user-friendly and frankly really, really obvious to anybody. Because, of course, we had criticism at Regulation 14 that we didn't just have a press here for everything button. Admittedly, that criticism was from one person, but they were very important. So there is no, there is no uh, date and time, but Gina and I will be in touch and it looking like it will be early January. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah, it just depends when uh, the council officers are back from Christmas holidays. Right. We've got FES on the 11th of January. Okay. We'll bear all of us in mind. And there's quite, this year it's quite obscure, the holidays, how they fall uh, in terms of the New Year's, etc. And there's like, because New Year's Day is on a weekend and Christmas is on a weekend. Right. Holid the holidays are tagged on the following week. Right. Okay. So I go back to work instead of a Monday. I'm back on a Wednesday, right? All day. Okay. So I'm just. But yeah, early January is fine. FES is on the 11th. Right. Okay. Gina? Well, if you want, I can just. We, me and Sarah can discuss it and I can maybe send some dates out um, so that you can be looking at them um, yeah. to see which one you may prefer. Okay. All right. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah? Is Michael going to do a list of things that were now a time, a bit of a timetable type of thing? That would really help, I think. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I've just shuffled all my papers together rather unhelpfully. But I think that that is that.
So, thank you so much, Gina. Perhaps we'll find out what happened to Wade. But I don't think we actually needed him. The person we needed for this meeting was Dave Chapman, and we had him, and I think that was really valuable and useful. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope your little girl's feeling better. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much as a matter.